Welcome to the Nathan.net. In this video, I'm going to set up a test TIG stack in Docker. And this is not to be confused with tungsten or inert gas or TIG welding, which is on my other channel, uh, nateboyce.com, if you want to check that out. TIG stack is Telegraph, InfluxDB, and Grafana. Telegraph is a plug-in driven server agent for collecting and reporting metrics. InfluxDB is a time series database, or TSDB, and it's like the, an old version of that is RRD tool, but this is much updated and has a lot more functionality. Grafana is an analytics and interactive visualization web application. All three are written in Go. I'm using Docker Compose for this because I wanted to demo it quickly and be able to blow it all away, and in the future, bring it back if I wanted to with just only having a couple configs on my local system here and not having to store the whole image or the application. And if I uh, do want to bring it in the future, I'm going to show in here, but it's going to actually pull the latest version of it, which is going to be kind of cool. So it should be, whenever I play with this, always have the most updated version. So the config files will be on the Nathan.net. The link will be in the description below. So Docker Compose uses YAML like Ansible playbook but it's not to be confused with Ansible. And you can see I have a dot one there. I was playing with and testing different versions of this. So let's take a look at that. You can see here I have at the top the version, and this is kind of specific to be version 2, version 3 is out, and maybe even a newer version for Docker Compose. Below that is your services. So here I have the name, but I also give it a container name. This is kind of optional, but it, it'll pick up that name, but it needs to be unique, so I like to add it. If you have multiple web servers, for example, if like it's an application with a web-based or proxy server or something like that, you'd want to have a name for each. Below that is the image, and this is where I'm actually doing the latest. And it's kind of cool because it's going to pull it from a repo, and you can see in this case I'm pulling it from a different one. But it's going to pull it down and it's going to get the latest version. So every time I fire this up, it's going to check and try to get the latest one. Next is the port mapping. And the ports and all this, most of these configs, when there's two listed like a file, a volume example, it's going to do the host port and container port. So it's host and then container. So this is mapping the host to the container. This is the same port. Next I have user, and because I am using this as my user on this Mint system, then I mapped it to my user ID. And that's just so that, because I'm doing volumes here, I want them to be readable and writable by, which they are by my user, by this uh, container. So this container can write information of this because I'm telling it to use this user ID. Next is volumes, which I kind of touched on, but this is mapping a host volume or directory in this case, to one on the container. So this just makes this part of it right here be read-writable on my local system. One of the other things is environment variables. So Grafana has some environment variables you could pass to it, specifically added for Docker, that you can't do in the INI file. For example, this is the admin password I set, which is secure. It's super secure. Um, the next is a uh, restart always. So that just kind of makes sure it does its best. If there's an error or something, it just keeps trying to restart. And so it'll keep trying to start this container up. And then there is links. So this just kind of shows the dependency between the two. So looking at, for example, this config file, I'm able to uh, pull, I pulled the config file from GitHub on the latest one from Grafana, the latest Grafana DNI. And I called it my custom INI on the local system, just so I know what it's for. And I mapped it to the Grafana one. And with that, I'm able to make changes to it and put custom changes. And the only downside to this would be, for example, if I'm not customizing it and I'm pulling the latest, I would need to go either pull the latest if there's some backwards dependency issues. But usually a lot of these applications will work with older config files and they make the upgrade paths pretty simple and some of them will just put up warnings that's deprecated, that option, they're no longer used. 
but it's a good idea if you're doing this and say for example a year later you're going to start it up there's probably been a couple major version changes so you would want to actually pull the latest one down and modify it to your likings we'll go on now to look at starting it up so I already installed and of course I was playing with it before as you can see from the backup the dot one backup file I have in there but I installed the docker compose um, packages and in Linux Mint, it was as simple as doing a sudo app get install docker dash compose. So it installed all the dependencies and made it really nice. And then I just had to add my user to the docker group and uh, it was all set up and ready to go. So let's go ahead and start this up. So to start it up, I'm not using sudo. I'm using docker compose. And if I use sudo, just I didn't want to start it as a root when everything's owned by me. Um, and then we'll do up. So up will it'll look for that docker compose.yaml by default and it'll try to start everything up and it'll go through and pull the latest images if it needs to and if you don't do the minus D it'll print all the information to the screen. So we're going to start this up and let it print information to the screen. You can see that it is starting everything up green's good, red's bad, yellow not so great. We should be getting some blue in here. Yep, there's some blue. So now we can actually check to see if Grafana started up. And to do that, we're going to open up a browser with localhost port 3000 because that's what we mapped it to. And then we'll do slash admin, and it will be, you can see it's already writing data. Here it is, I have that pre up. There we go. And then it will be admin and secret. It's my super secret password. Let me see if I spelled it, I think I spelled it wrong. So we can always go back and look at my config, shift control T to get me a new tab, and then we will do docker compose, oh secure, I didn't use secret, I used secure, see that's why it's good to put in the config I guess, so yeah that would never work, <laughs> there it goes, and I'm logged in now, and you can see that I already took up the data sources because I'd been playing with this before and I believe there's even some dashboards this is just a home one I thought I had a custom one in here maybe that one didn't say huh. oh, there's a something okay um, but you can see for example, that this is running, this might just be sample test data. There is a data source configured. It's tilt saving and it says it's working. Okay. But this is just kind of what I wanted to go over. This is an example of just getting this up and working. A quick example, I may go more into this in the future and uh, I'm sure there's other tutorials on that but this is kind of just to see how you can use docker to pose compose to quickly get this up and going and we will go back to this and control C to stop it and then you can see that easy it is gone and it's down so I got it all shut down and I used the actually let me see docker compose down minus v option and what that did is that went ahead and I already removed it so it's showing up now but it removed the networking and basically all the temporary files for it so the minus v option cleans it all up and what I want to do now is actually see how much space this is taking up with the configs and all the files ahead so let me go see and you can see now in this directory which has this including some backup stuff it's only 2.2 megs so you can have a full stack system using docker compose setup 
to play with and test for a really low amount of disk space. And I can remove all the Docker images on here and only have really 2.2 megs that I need to kind of keep around. And then we will just take a look at actually what's in here left over. And then there's the logs. And it cleaned most of that stuff up, which is good. I type. Just going through here. So there is some data in that. So it did keep some data, but a lot of it it cleaned up and removed, which is really good. And like I said, it's only 2.2 megs, so I can keep this around and have it backed up. And it's very portable this way too. I could just tar, gzip that whole directory up and move it to something else, and move it to a different machine and kick it off and run it. And they should be the same. If it's the same version of Docker, or at least a compatible version of Docker Compose, it should be able to start up and run it and work. So, Alright, well, thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. Bye.